Earlier this summer, the Glowforge became available for purchase for those who did not originally back the fundraising project. I've been keeping an eye on the product for several months, waiting for it to become available. In August, I noticed they were officially selling the Glowforge on Amazon, and I couldn't pass up free two-day delivery, so I went ahead and purchased one. They actually market the Glowforge as a 3D laser printer, and while it's not what we commonly think of when we hear laser printer, I completely understand what they are going for with the marketing. Using the device is really just about as simple as printing with a traditional printer. The Glowforge originally launched with two models, the Basic and the Pro. This summer, with a general release to the public, they lowered the cost of the Basic and added in a new Plus model. The Basic model at the time of this video is $24.95, the Plus is $39.95, and the Pro model is $59.95. There's an optional add-on air filter for $9.95, but that's not shipping until December of 2018. You can purchase directly from them and pay via credit card, PayPal, or monthly payments via a third-party credit line. You can also purchase the Plus model from Amazon, which is what I did. I have included affiliate links in the video description below, so if you purchase using one of them, I will receive a commission. The three models are very similar. The Basic has a 6-month warranty and a 40-watt laser, the Plus has a 12-month warranty and a 45-watt laser, and the Pro has a 12-month warranty, a 45-watt laser, an upgraded cooling system, and a pass-through slot that enables you to work on pieces of any length. Here are the general specifications for all Glowforge models, and I will go over some areas of interest. The first thing to note is that the Glowforge is fairly large. It's 38 inches wide, almost 21 inches from front to back, and over 8 inches tall. It's also heavy. According to the Amazon product listing, it weighs 115 pounds. It's certainly a two-person operation to move it, so you'll want to pick a spot in your workshop and leave it. Speaking of that, make sure you place the Glowforge someplace where you can properly ventilate it. Under no circumstances should you allow the exhaust from the machine to enter your workspace. The fumes are a nasty business. Next up is the work area inside the machine. All three models have the same material width limitation, 20 inches. The Basic and Plus are limited to materials 18 inches from front to back, and the Pro can accommodate any length. The actual usable operating range inside of the machine is 19.5 inches wide and 11 inches from front to back. If you remove the tray from the machine, it can accommodate materials up to 2 inches in height, or just a half an inch with the tray installed. There are two cameras inside the Glowforge. The first is mounted to the lid and is used to provide the work area preview in the software. The second camera is exclusively used by the device. One note here is that you are not provided a live video feed from either camera. The overhead camera view can be refreshed, but not viewed in real time as the machine is operating. Another note here, the Glowforge is a Wi-Fi connected device. The machine must be connected to your Wi-Fi network in order to be used. Lastly, a note on the Pro model. The pass-through slot only accommodates materials up to a quarter of an inch in thickness. As you can see, the Glowforge is capable of cutting and engraving a wide variety of materials. The company itself sells materials they call proof grade that complement the laser printer. Available materials range from hardwoods and plywoods to acrylics and more. The primary benefits with the materials they sell are ease of use and convenience. Each board comes with a QR code sticker that the Glowforge recognizes and it automatically adjusts the speed and laser power settings to exactly match what the material requires. Proof grade materials come covered in a removable protective paper that keeps the finished surface in pristine condition while the laser cutter does its work. There's a sample pack of materials included with the device. So far I've only used a couple different materials and they've all turned out nicely. The great thing about proof grade materials are you load the material, make your cut, pull the protective paper, and you've got a beautiful finished piece that requires no sanding or finishing. You can obviously use materials from other vendors, but you may have to fiddle with the speed and power settings until you find ones that work. The Glowforge uses the web-based app for designing your layout and controlling the machine. This means you have to have a Wi-Fi network and an active internet connection to use the device. I personally don't see this as a negative. The developer side of me is very curious how this actually works. The biggest advantage with this approach is they only need to develop one web-based app and it works on any device and they can push out updates and new features instantly to owners. I will dive further into the Glowforge's software in my next video. The last thing I want to go over are presets or proof grade materials. On screen is a recent posting about preset capabilities. In addition to simply cutting the material, you also have the ability to engrave and score it. Generally you'll be working with vector graphics, however you can also engrave photos onto your material. The presets available to you in the software can vary depending on what piece of proof grade material you are using. Also, as I mentioned earlier, because the web-based software can be updated any time, the options available to you may change. That's as far as I want to go for now. In my next video, I will go through the Glowforge app and do a series of example projects showing off the Glowforge's various capabilities. If you've not already subscribed, please do. And if you have subscribed, be sure to click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. See you next time.